What is up guys, it is Nick. We are back to do the FanDuel Friday lineup builder here. Uh, lots of things are going to change over the weekend. Uh, we've got a lot of Packers news we're waiting on, and so it should be real interesting this weekend. You're going to have to keep up with news. We've got other news as well going on. I'm going to try to do my best to break it down over here on FanDuel uh, and get you guys all ready to go. So, starting out at the quarterback position, we got Patrick Mahomes at $8,600. If you want to get real contrarian over here, go ahead and play yourself some Patrick Mahomes. I am not going that route. I'm going to be paying down. I do like me some Stafford at 7600 or Dalton at 75 uh, Russ Wilson at 72, but I think who I'm going to be playing is all the way down here. I'm going to be playing my Oregon boy, Marcus Mariota, 6,800. Comparison in price, he's 6,100 on DK, which is more expensive than all of these quarterbacks. Uh, Dalton is more expensive than him, but Dalton's more expensive than Cousins, I believe. Or no, wait, Dalton's 5,900. He's right under Cousins. Stafford is cheaper than Dalton. Kind of a weird little price pricing there, but, uh, Seems like a good value over here at 6800 for Marcus Mariota. A little bit over the average salary, um, but I think for 6800 it's a matchup against Buffalo. He should be able to use his legs. He's He's been using his legs a fair amount this year, 46 yards, 51 yards. 15 in week one where he got kind of hurt. Um, week three where he was hurt and needed to run. And then he seemed to be healthy against Philly. And so I'm going to go ahead and play Marcus Mariota against Buffalo. Moving on, let's go ahead and get the let's nail the defense out of the way. A lot of options at defense. Uh, they did not price the Titans defense as far up as I thought. They are only 3900 against the old Buffalo Bills. Um, and I think they're your I know I like to usually pay down into this range, but uh, if we take a peep at all these down here, Good luck playing any of those defenses. Um, the the first viable one is really the the Titans, and at 3,900, I think you just lock and load them over here. Play Marcus Mariota and the Titans defense, pretty easy. At the tight end position, this is where it gets kind of easy, on, or uh, kind of difficult. On DraftKings, Jimmy Graham looks like the lock if the Packers wide receivers are out, which we'll talk about them in just a second, but... He's 6,100 over here on FanDuel, so I don't think he's the lock of all locks over here. I think he's a good play, but I don't think he's like a lock and load. Gotta have him. Who I really like, it's a crazy play. I gotta find him. Where's Seattle? Is Nick Vanette, 4,300. He's the dead minimum on DraftKings. We'll talk about him tomorrow. Um, speaking of that, the final look for DraftKings slash... I mean, updates for FanDuel in terms of news. We'll probably go up later. I need to wait until the Packers release their injury news and all of that different stuff and see about different other teams releasing their final injury news because we've got a lot of injury stuff. So I want to make sure I have all that data before I record that video. So it may come out a little bit later at night. I do like me some Nick Vanette at 4,300. Really the last tight end on the roster. They have Daryl Davis, but let's be honest. It's Nick Vanette. That's really the only option. He's been seeing kind of some plays through the first couple weeks. Um, it's not like he's just like been completely excluded and then all of a sudden now he's going to play. Uh, he has been playing, and so I do like me some Nick Vanette. We'll leave it blank for now, and we'll come back to it uh, once we know how much salary we have left. So we'll hop over to wide receiver here, and this is where it gets interesting. So we'll go to the Packers. Randall Cobb is out with his hamstring. Geronimo Allison has still not practiced with his concussion. Um, <clears throat> they're optimistic about his op uh, about his potential to play on Sunday, but he still remains questionable without a practice yet. Devontae Adams did not practice again today, and they're hoping he practices tomorrow, but it's not a for sure thing. Um, got kind of conflicting reports on this. So Mike McCarthy says that Devontae Adams will practice tomorrow. But then they kind of said there's still a chance that he doesn't practice. So I'm not quite sure what to make about it. I want to see what they do with that. If, if Allison and Cobb both sit, which Cobb's already out. So if Allison sits, we're playing Marquez Valdez-Scantling. 
even I think if Devontae Adams sits and it's Geronimo Allison, I think you still play Marquise Valdez Scantling. I'm not entirely sure who they'll activate if it's Equinemius St. Brown or if it's Jamon Moore who they prefer. I would assume it's Equinemius St. Brown even I don't think Equinemius St. Brown is a good receiver, like NFL caliber receiver. So I far prefer Marquez Valdez Scantling, but you could take a shot on Equinemius St. Brown if he's the one that ends up being if all three of these guys are out, I think you can pretty much lock in Marquez Valdez Scantling and whoever they list as the number two wide receiver. You have to pay attention to the depth charts and see what exactly what they'll do with Equinemius St. Brown and Jamon Moore. Uh, and then you'll also have to decide on whether you think they're going to put Ty Montgomery in the slot or what they're going to do with that. For now, we'll just go ahead and put Marquez Valdez Scantling. And I think Devontae Adams will play. I mean, we can read this. He said that Adams will practice on Saturday. Um, he didn't practice today. So this is not, this doesn't matter. He didn't practice today. Uh, which is, what, what what I read is that he didn't practice today. Um, he, it, it doesn't necessarily clo mean he's not going to play. If he does play, I love him, but we'll leave him out for now. We'll assume, we'll just go with he's not playing, and we'll just lock in Marquez Valdez Scantling for now. No, if Allison is out and Devontae Adams plays, I'll be playing Devontae Adams. If Allison is in, I probably won't play Adams, and I'll just play, uh, I'll just play Allison instead. If both are out, I'll probably play Marquez Valdez Scanling and then either Equinemia St. Brown, Jamon Moore, or Ty Montgomery. What is Ty Montgomery's price on here? 5,500. Yeah, I'd probably play Ty Montgomery. They'll probably line him up in the slot, I would guess. Um, if those guys are out, they'll just use Ty Montgomery as a slot wide receiver. Uh, but that's enough talking about Green Bay wide receivers. We'll put Marquez Valdez Scantling in there for now, and we'll we'll circle or we'll, we won't circle back. But uh, I'll talk about it again tomorrow uh, on the DraftKings video. So other options, we'll we'll continue here at wide receiver. I pretty much like paying up at wide receiver this week. There's not a whole lot of paying down other than the Green Bay guys. I mean, I don't know what his price is. His price good over here on FanDuel. I love him on DraftKings. Yeah, he's he's cheap. What is he? We're in Miami. All right, if Devontae Parker goes, which it's looking more and more like he's gonna give it a go at five k, he becomes really interesting. If somehow Al if if Allison and Devontae Adams play, Devontae Parker is probably your value saver. He's five k. He's a talented wide receiver, and Cincinnati's defense is not. Elite against the pass. Um, so I do like me Devontae Parker. He's 3,500 on DK, 5K. Both 500 over the minimum on both sites. And so he's an interesting option. Uh, probably won't need him on FanDuel, but he is an option. Uh, I think, though, what you're doing over here is you're either coming down to... How much is... Where is Kenny Galladay? Wait, are you telling me Kenny... What price is Kenny Galladay? Kenny Galladay. Yeah, at 6,300, you're probably playing Kenny to, you got Galladay. He's cheaper than Marvin Jones. Marvin Jones has historically killed Green Bay, but he hasn't had Kenny Galladay to compete with. Golden Tate has a rough matchup in the slot with Jair Alexander, and so I really like Kenny Galladay this week at 6,300. On DraftKings, I prefer Marvin Jones, who you save about $1,600 off of compared to Galladay, and so... I far prefer him over there, but on here where Galladay is cheaper, I much prefer Kenny Galladay. Boosts you up to $7,600 remaining. And now I think you're just locking in your favorite top tier. So you're either playing Devontae Adams, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, Adam Thielen, Julio Jones, or Antonio Brown. Pretty much take your pick, whoever whoever the heck you want. It doesn't really matter. If you, if you, want, if you prefer Julio, play Julio. If you prefer Adam Thielen, play Adam Thielen. If you prefer Juju, play Juju. For the sake of this lineup builder, I'll put in my favorite. It's Julio Jones. Um, I think he has a big week this week against um, Pittsburgh. Um, 
my favorite of the cheaper options is Thielen. He's got 19 targets in a game, and he's averaging about 11 if you include the, or he's averaging about 12 and a half, 12.6 if you include exclude the 19 target game. If you include the 19 target game, it's it's a lot. It's like 14 and a half or something like that uh, targets per game. I expect him to return to about the 12 uh, if he can find in the end zone, be huge. But he's pretty much a lock for double digit points against a secondary in Philly that's not very good. Uh, I do like Juju. I think the Falcons will shade to try to take away Antonio Brown, so I do like Juju as well. Uh, probably won't play um, Juju over here. He's a little bit better priced on DraftKings. Uh, I'd probably just pay the extra 1000 for Antonio Brown over here. So if we go over to tight end and we plug in Jimmy Graham, because I do, I do like Jimmy Graham, but he's also dealing with his own injury. He's limited in practice, but... He looks like he should be good to go. Um, it's just been maintenance and uh, and stuff like that. So I think he should be good to go for Sunday, but do keep a monitor on that. Uh, they play the 1 o'clock, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about that. Uh, let's move on to running back now. Last two positions, and then obviously I play a running back in flex. So for me, this is pretty easy over here on Fandle. So you're gonna, I'm going to start out by throwing in Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon. Top two running backs on the slate. Uh, it leaves you a little bit limited in the salary department, and we'll talk about that. But I just love me some Todd Gurley and Melvin Gordon this week. I think both are in great spots, should have the lead, should be able to to uh, get a fair share of carries as well as catches. Uh, hopefully they get your, their catches while they're building the lead, and then they get their rushes once they have the lead. That's the optimal. And then... The flex is where it gets interesting. So there are a lot of different running backs that you can look at this week. With 5,500 left, if those guys are out for Green Bay, you got yourself Ty Mont if you really want. You got Ty Montgomery. If, if, if you really want Ty Montgomery, you can have him. Uh, other options down here, it's pretty limited, but you could go with Alfred Morris if you think that game's just going to be a bruising run game. Uh, other than that, I'm not in love with too many people down here. Uh, so you're looking at coming down off of Julio. So let's come off of Julio, and we'll go with... I said I liked Adam Thielen, but we'll take the salaries here. We'll throw in Devontae Parker. So it gives us 6300 at the flex. Let's slow down here, 6300 You've got Tyler Boyd, which I think is a great play um this week uh miami Xavier howard i believe miami ranks number one against number one wide receivers uh this year and uh tyler boyd should get an easier matchup uh with them trying to take aj green away they should have Xavier howard playing one-on-one -on -one against him and then as well shade of safety so that should really help um tyler boyd get open shady is interesting at 6300 but buffalo is just so terrible i I just can't do that. I just can't. If So Darren Sproles has already been rolled out. If Corey Clement gets rolled out, I really like Jay Ajayi, even against Minnesota. He should see a bulk of the carries. 15-plus um, carries should be the expectation with a couple of targets. Uh, so I do really like Jay Ajayi at 6,300 if those guys sit out. Uh, another option is to create just a little bit more money and throw in TJ Yeldon at 6,500. No Leonard Fournette, but he has been limited throughout the week, but he should be able to play with his ankle injury. Um, you can create that money any way you want. Come down off of uh, Galladay, come off of a Adams to a different lower price, come off of Jimmy Graham. There's so many options to get to Yeldon. Uh, the optimal is probably to go Gurley, Gordon, Yeldon, um, because Yeldon should get 70%, 75% of the running back touches in Jacksonville. Um, but as always, guys, this is just kind of process and the way I think through my lineups. Um, I do really like all the players in this lineup. Obviously, it doesn't fit. It's 200 over, but uh, I do really like the lineup. I will talk more about this tomorrow. Obviously, you guys know I play about mm, about 8% of the amount that I play on DraftKings on FanDuel. I usually set my FanDuel lineups early on um, Sunday morning, and then I tinker with my DraftKings lineups the rest of the morning, uh, usually locking in my FanDuel lineups pretty early. FanDuel tends to be a little bit more easy uh, once you get full news to build the lineups, um, as well as they seem to have some players mispriced from week to week, like Kenny Galladay and Marcus Mariota this week. So they tend to lend to 
a little bit easier of lineup builds. But we'll have to wait for the Green Bay news because it can really affect how we play this. If Adams, Allison are in, I probably don't play Jimmy Graham over here. Um, I'll say my favorite t tight end, um, kind of mid-range. Um, so Jesse James is an option. Um, but I think you're going to go all the way down to Vance McDonald. So he's 4,600 over here. And uh, he seems to be Pittsburgh's number one tight end. And if you can get five targets out of him and a nice amount of receiving yards in a nice matchup where the Falcons allow dump offs, I think he's a great option at 4,600. Him or Nick Vanette, if I, if I don't play Jimmy Graham, it'll be Vance McDonald or Nick Vanette over here on FanDuel. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope the video was at least a little bit helpful. Uh, drop the video a like if you did, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow with the... Uh, Final look for DraftKings. It might come out a little bit later than normal, just so I can make sure I get all the, the pertinent news. So I'll catch you guys then. Peace out.